Hey, I'm Dr. Sebastian Zalson. Thanks for joining us again for our part three of five of the series on how to manage uh, lower grade tears or grade one and minor grade two tears or as a lot of athletes will call them as muscle strains. Uh, without going into too many details or, or going over the entire uh, content of the last videos, I'll hit on a couple bullet points here. But remember, if you want the entire um, information from those videos, you can subscribe to our feeds up over here and up over here. In summary, if you've had a strain, a lot of times you're going to think rest, 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 and you keep thinking a lot of rest will take care of this. And actually, for the first five to seven days following the injury, it's not a bad idea to do that. So the typical things like ice, heat, compression, um, elevation, and basically staying off it or even immobilizing aren't bad things to do. After that, strains actually respond much better within the ranges of about seven to 21 days of more active type of mobilization, or we call this the mobilization period. Things that we use within the this period are going to be reciprocal inhibition stretching, um, or some people might call it light dynamic stretching, uh, passive modalities, um, or even light tissue work or light massage are good ideas. Remember, within this mobilization period, a lot of people really want to try to get deep with those muscles and try to really manipulate them. It's actually a better idea to, to keep rather light. Don't stretch it really hard. Don't deep, go really deep with the tissue work because these areas are still healing some. Remember, if you want to see more of the research and validation for the reasons we do this stuff, go ahead and check our videos prior. Now on to the topic of today, which is going to be early strength period, or at least that's what we will call it. Um, most research will agree that about 21 days to about six weeks is a good time frame to strengthen the muscles and tendons that have been damaged. And again, that is the main goal of this period, to strengthen the muscles and tendons that have been damaged. Now, it's really hard for a lot of athletes and patients to feel this is a good thing to do at the time because they feel very vulnerable and they feel like it's going to flare up their condition, which um, I can completely understand that because I know when I had a strain uh, and I was wanting to play baseball again, it was easier for me to sit and just rest because I felt like that was safer. But um, after reading all the research, I really had to change my mindset if I was going to play baseball at the same level again. Strength is something that your muscles and tendons definitely need to become strong, healthy, um, and resist injuries. And I can already tell you that 99% of trainers and strength coaches out there are going to agree with me when I say this, that you will not actually get strong. Your muscles will not get strong unless you make them. All right. In our community, or the way we like to see how the body works, is abides by a, a rule called the SED principle. And really all this means is it's a descriptive way of showing how the body will accommodate to loads put upon it. So SED is specific adaptive force to implied demand. Your muscles and tendons will not get stronger unless you make them. A great example of this is bodybuilders. All right. Bodybuilders are they're huge. Their muscles are gigantic. Um, but they don't get this way on accident. They have to work for it and they have to work really hard. All right, and by no means am I telling you to actually become a bodybuilder and make your muscles and tendons like that, but I can only tell you that if your muscles and tendons have been damaged and they haven't been used for a long time, they atrophy or get weaker. And as long as they're weak, they're going to become frail and more susceptible to injuries again. So people always wonder why injuries happen again, and a lot of times it's because they haven't been properly rehabbed or strengthened after the fact. Now weekend warriors, a lot of them will think that if they get injured on Sunday, if they rest the entire week, don't move, don't stretch, don't do anything of that nature and just take some medication, they're going to have their best possible chance of playing the next Sunday or Saturday well. This is a terrible plan of attack in my opinion and it really doesn't abide by a lot of the guidelines that you can see in research. For this early strength period, I like to recommend specific exercises for the specific conditions that these athletes have. Now, I really like eccentric contractions or the lengthening contractions. All right, you and the gym, or a lot of gym goers are going to call them the negatives. All right, these exercises have been shown to improve strains a little faster than the isometric or concentric holds that are typical in weight training. Now, you're probably wondering what are these contractions you're talking about? Uh, I don't expect you guys to know this, all right, but all, all you have to know is that these types of lengthening contractions, which can be put together by someone like me, a good strength and condition coach, and so on, um, it makes it so the program's better for you, it's less chance of flare-ups, and I know in my personal experience with working with people, there's less chance of dropout or the people will comply with the program a little bit better because there's less chance of flare-up. What does the research say about eccentric loading? 
In 2005, Johnson put a study together where he found there was a 90% satisfaction rating uh, with people who did eccentric exercise as compared to concentric, and this is in regards to jumper's knee. 90% is a big difference if you're going to ask me. In 2004, a study in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports by a guy, actually I can't even pronounce the name of, we're going to put a link below this video so you guys can actually see that there is a credible source in this so we can get uh, credit for it as well. Um, but it was on hamstrings and it showed a difference between again the shortening contractions and the eccentric or lengthening contractions. And if I was going to quote it, I would say that they had, um, they said in the conclusion that there was a significant decrease in chance of hamstring strains if you did the eccentric exercise. Personally, I think that's a significant finding. There's lots of research out there like this. These are just a couple of them. So go ahead and do your due diligence and you can find a lot of these things on PubMed or Medscape. Next video, we're going to jump right into what we like to call the mid-strength period. And this is roughly from about six weeks to ten weeks after the point of injury. So I think you guys can see that actually that if you're more than a month removed from the original point of injury, that you're well behind the curve of what you should have been doing if you haven't been doing it yet. If you've only been resting, there's lots of other things you should have been doing. And don't get me wrong, you can still catch up some, but there's time is getting lost as we speak. So keep in mind, if you have these conditions, make sure that you're seeing someone who can provide a good program for you and point you in the right direction. Because if you don't, these injuries typically become chronic and become long-term injuries. So they'll really hinder what you want to do in your relative sport. This is all we have on the topic for today. Now remember, you can get a lot, lots more good information from us. So I want you guys to get linked up with the Performance Place. More articles by myself and Dr. Lee. We both work here and design programs for athletes who have been injured. Um, you can click on our bigger logo on the, side of this, on the side of this video and it'll get you to that email feed which gets a lot of the written stuff that you can't get on YouTube. There's a little tiny logo in the corner as well, different corner. You can get to our, you subscribe to our YouTube feed. Now remember, the, so we're here to help as much as we can obviously. The best best possible thing we can give you is education on topics because these are common things that we get asked frequently throughout the day working here and we realize that a lot of our athletes do not fully understand it so even some of these videos that we're doing now and we've already been treating these people for a little while we plan on sending these to them because this is always something you can get better at understanding and the more you understand your body the better you're going to be able to improve your conditions going forward all right take care